Well, good evening, Father Zod. I'm so excited to be with you. I want to tell you right now that God is moving in a miraculous way in each one of our lives. And so this evening, as we come around God's Word, I just want to let you know that God is going to help us learn some truths that is going to change our lives. So let's just pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as we come around your Word, Father, I pray for insight, revelation, and understanding to flow. Father, I thank you that we are not going to be the same ever again in Jesus' name. And Lord, that not only will we understand the insight of what you have for us tonight, but God, I pray right now that you are going to do something supernatural in our lives. Lord, that we will change the way that we do things. And Lord, that we will understand what you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, as you can see, we're still in Johannesburg, so I, uh, I've given the band off, all right, um, because uh, Jean and them were on the course too. And so I want to just say that as we come and get into God's Word tonight, I trust that you are going to get an impartation of some truth that you have not had before. And so I want to get right into the teaching tonight because it's going to deal with every area of our lives. And I want to just help us understand what God's word is and how it impacts me and what God can expect from me. All right. What does he expect from me? And how do I see myself in the body of Christ? All right. I trust that this is going to help us. All right. So I want to deal with a topic entitled, we are all part. We are all part. Now I want us to go and pick up the story of uh, David. I'm going to give a lot of scripture tonight. All right, and um, because we are live, you're not going to have any of it edited and seen. So please, I'm going to just ask as you watch, just put on the comments there, just put the references up for the people so that they can go back and look. All right, so I want to deal in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8 to 26. It's a long portion, but I want to deal with this uh, as section to start with. Now, let me give you a background. David um, was a man of war. One of the things about David that was spectacular was the fact that David always inquired of the Lord. So in other words, everything that David did, he would always go and ask God, what do you think? God, what should I go to battle? How do I go to battle? The Bible says that David never lost a single battle. This is very important. Because he always inquired of the Lord. Now what happened in this story was he inquired of the Lord, went to battle, won the battle. And when he gets back, he finds out that while he was away, that the enemy had come in and had stolen his families and his possessions, some of his possessions were gone. So what happens now is you must understand these guys have just got back from a war. His mighty men are tired. They are fed up to the point that they actually discuss killing David now. You know, basically saying, listen, you took us to a major battle. Okay, we won the battle, but now we come back. We are totally exhausted. We are out of this thing. And now we're sitting with all of our families missing and everything gone. Now it's just, it's your fault. We're going to kill you. Because now they are fed up. And I want us to pick it up. David is totally, totally overwhelmed now. He just falls on the face and the Bible says that he just cried and he was weak. The way he just cried before God. Verse 8. So David inquires of the Lord. You see, this is one thing that David always did. He always goes to God to ask him what to do next. He inquires of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So God says to David, David, go. Go and sort this lot out. And you're going to recover everything that was taken. So God makes a promise to David. So David went. He and the 600 men who were with him. Okay, and he came to the brook of Besa. Where they stayed. Okay. Uh, sorry. Where, uh, where those stayed who were left behind. So at the brook of Besa. Some of those 600 stayed behind. But David pursued. He and the 400 men. For the 200 men stayed behind who were so weary that they could not even cross the brook of Beskar. So they couldn't get past this brook anymore, the Beskar, 
And they said, listen, we just can't anymore. All right? Now, I need you to understand, people criticize these guys. People criticize and say, well, look, you just did not come to a prayer meeting or you did not pull your weight or you're not part of this thing. I want you to understand, you don't know what people are doing behind the scenes. So don't judge people before you really know what is going on. So these 200 men were exhausted because they'd given everything in the last battle. They've had no time to recoup. They've had no time to do anything other than just go with the flow and into the next thing. Okay. Um, verse 11. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and they gave him bread and he ate and they, ate and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. He had eaten no bread or drink or water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, To whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of the Amalekites. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. In other words, the guys that had taken David's Families and everything had one of his guys sick, so he just left him behind and said, you, you can die. So we made an invasion on the southern area, okay, in the territory which belongs to Judah, in the southern area of Caleb, and then turned Ziglag uh, with fire, burned Ziglag with fire. So he's telling David, this, this is what we did. We went through, we just plundered everything. David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? And, he's, and he said, Swear to me by the God that you will never kill me in order to deliver me into the hands of my master. And I'll take you down to the troop. So in other words, they've got this guy. He's nearly dead. They feed him. Get his strength up. He says, listen, take us to where these guys are. He said, but if you promise me that you don't give me over to these guys or kill me. All right. I'll help you. I'll be an informant for you. But you don't do that to me. Uh, and when he had brought, uh, brought him down. Uh, they uh, where they were spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all of the great spoil that they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. So in other words, these guys had gone and sorted out the Philistines, which is David's enemy, and they'd come to David and sorted out Judah where David was, and now they've got this massive spoil of two, basically two kingdoms that they've now just sorted out. So these are Malachites were very powerful people, okay? Then David attacked them from twilight until evening of the next day. So he went from the one night, they say five o'clock, right through the night, right through the next day, okay? Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So in other words, out of this massive army, only 400 people got away. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David also rescued his two wives. So now David gets the whole spoil return of Judah, what was his. And he gets the spoil of what was the Philistines. Right? So now he's got this double harvest that he's now pulled in. And nothing of theirs was lacking. In other words, nothing was missing. So everything God said, you will recover. Get everything back. So David got his wives back. All the stuff that was there, everything was there. Okay. Neither, uh, nothing was lacking. Either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything, which had been taken from them. David recovered it all. Then David took all the flocks, the herds. They driven before those um, other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. Now David came to the 200 men that were so weary. And this is where we, I want you to start seeing this. Because I'm going to start teaching a principle. Remember this, we are all in this. We are all part of this. Okay. Then David came to the 200 men who were so weary that they could not follow David. Whom they had to stay at the brook of Bessa. And so they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he greeted them. So David was very excited to see these, these 200 men that had left there. Now remember, they had given their all in the previous battle. But all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David. 
In other words, of the original 400 that went to go fight, said this, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered except the very man's wife and children, all right, that they had led them away in the pot. So in other words, they saying, listen, man, they didn't come and fight this extra battle with us. Okay. Now we are going to just give them back what was taken from them. In other words, their families and stuff, they can have their families back. But as for the rest of the spoil, the stuff we got from the Philistines and stuff, it's not going back to them. But David said, my brethren, you shall not do so. And what the Lord has given us, who has preserved us and delivered us into the hand of the troop that came against us, into, uh, sorry, into our hand, the troop that had come against us. For who will lead you in this matter? But as part, but as of his part, who goes down to the battle, so shall his part be who stays with the supplies. They shall all share alike. The guys that stayed, the 200, that were looking after the supplies, in other words, the resources that they had had, remember that they'd come back with from the battle? They get the same share as those who actually went into the battle. Okay? And so it was, from that day forward, he made a statute, okay, a law and an ordinance for Israel to this day. He says, everybody gets an equal portion as long as they were part and they were, they were connected to what was going on. Everybody gets an equal portion, even though their roles were different. So the guy on the front line got exactly the same as the guy looking after the supplies. But now listen to verse 26. Now, when David came to Ziklag, all right, he sent some of the spoils to the elders of Judah. And to his friends saying, here is a present for you from the spoils of the enemy of the Lord. So David didn't just go and give the guys that were in the battle. He even went to the guys who had their stuff taken and he sent them spoils in the present. And he said, listen, I'm giving you of the spoils too. Everybody is part of this. Everybody who lost, everybody who suffered comes with the restoration. Everybody. David was not greedy. Okay, so I want you to understand this because this has some very important biblical principle in it. Let's take a few more uh, stories. In Numbers chapter 31 verse 27, and I'm not going through the whole history of what happened at that fight, and it says this, and divided the plunder into two parts between those who took part of the war and went out to battle, and then also to the rest of the congregation. So after that, even before, because numbers was before that, okay? There was an idea that everybody got part of the spoil. Whether you're in battle or whether you weren't in battle. Joshua 22, 8, right? And this is also before David made this declaration in law. And he spoke to them saying, Return with much riches to your tents. With very much livestock, silver, gold, bronze, with iron, and with very much clothing, divide the spoils of your enemies with your brethren. This is in Joshua. So I want you to understand that this is a principle that if you go to war, we are all in this together. There is something that is going to be shared. I want you to look at Psalm 68 verse 12, and this one's interesting. The ladies are going to like this. Kings of enemies flee, they flee, and she who remains at home divides the spoil. In other words, she might not be out there fighting, but she inherits or gets part of the spoil when her husband comes back. Now, I want to say this. We as the body of Christ are part of one body. And there has been a, a very dangerous perception excuse me, that one 
function in the body is more important than another function. That one person in the body of Christ is more important than somebody else. I want us to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I want to go from 12 to 19. I want to show you something. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, as also is Christ. In other words, we are made up of different people, but we are one body. Okay? Like your physical body, I've got different members. In other words, I have a hand, I have an eye, I have a nose, you know. But it makes up one body. Now, God uses that analogy. Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says, guys, understand this. We all have different functions in the body. We are different members. We are different parts in this body, but we are one body. And it says this, for, one, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slave or free, and have all been made to drink of one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. We are many members, but we are one body. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not the body, is it therefore not part of the body? You see, some people think that one function is better than the other and God's going to bless it more. It's not true. I'm going to help us with this. I'm going to show you what happens. If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, am I not part of the body? Is he therefore not part of the body? If the whole body was just an eye, all I had was an eye, one eye, that's me. Where would you be hearing? If the whole body was hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the, the members, each one of them in the body, just as he has pleased. In other words, God chose you to either be an eye, a nose, a heart, a hand, whatever it is. He chose where you fit in. He chose what your function is in the body. All right? If they were, no, were all one member, where would the body be? In other words, if we were all the same, doing the same thing, you can't call it a body anymore. Now, how does that relate to me? I want to say this. There are different functions in the body of Christ, but not one function is more important than another function. Okay? Now, there are many that have come to me and said to me, well, doctor, you're going to get a special reward for all your sacrifice and all the stuff you've had to put up with and running the way you run and, and, and. I want to say that that's not true. Listen carefully. Firstly, I want to say, you are only rewarded by what you do. What has God called you to do in the body? I will get exactly the same reward as somebody else who is staying at home, who is keeping the spiritual atmosphere open over my suburb when I'm not there. If that's what God called him to do. Or the intercessor that sits in the closet and prays for us while we're on the road. They will get exactly the same blessing and, and reward as what I get. Because remember, the reward comes to the entire body. And if the entire body is obedient and connected and part of this, they are all going to be it. Now, I've had numerous people come to me and say, I can't go out and, and meet you. I, you know, we've got appointments. We're too busy. We can't be part of this thing. But listen, I can, I can help you. Some people have said, listen, we're going to pray. That's all that we can do. All right, we don't have many, uh, don't have resources. I can just pray. Other guys say, listen, I've got some resources, but I don't have time to sit in the closet and pray. I'm a busy person. I'm busy. Whatever it is. I want to tell you right now, if you are part of the battle for our nation, in any way, if you are fighting and saying, God, I'm connected to this thing, I'm fighting in it, you will reap any reward that we get. If we push back the darkness in our nation, you will get the reward with it. 
If we go into an area and turn the thing around, you will get the reward if you are supporting it. I've got people who sit down and, and can't understand how that if they just give some finance, how they get a blessing connected to this. Paul makes a very clear statement to the Philippians. He says, I, you're going to share in my reward. Okay, because you have financially helped me carry on doing what I've got to do. And we need to get past this thing to think that one person is more spiritual or more important or that they're going to get a better reward than somebody else. David was the king. David went into battle. He got nothing more than anybody else did. Everything was shared out equally amongst everybody. I want to tell you right now that the body of Christ need to understand this. There is no um, bigger function than another function. The secret is this, is are we connected to the same cause? You see, I can't sit down and say, listen, I, I, I'm not connected to any spiritual battle. I'm not connected at all and I'll just get my reward. You know, I'm not connected at all. Let me tell you something. God is calling the body of Christ to stand united. The more we stand united and go towards a common cause, the more the blessing is going to flow and the results are going to come. This is way past what church you belong to. All right? If you are connected to the battle that God is calling us as the body of Christ to, and that is to be a light and to push back the darkness, then I'm telling you, there is going to be a blessing for you. Now, I want to speak directly to Father's heart. Now, I want to just say this. We are part of a digital church. Many people have not even come to meet me personally yet. I haven't got to see you or you might be in a town that's far away from where I've been. I've tried my best to get around the nation. But I want to say this. If you help us, and I'm not talking about your tithe and offering now. I'm talking about just helping us, either praying or financially sitting down and say, come to me, help carry this vision. I want to say this, everything that you do, you can expect an impartation or part of the reward that comes to us from what we've done. All right. And so I want to just say thank you to everybody who's helping us carry this thing through the nation. All right. Right now, I'm having a tremendous amount of demand put on me to go further than our nation. All right, people are trying to get me into other nations, into the continent, all over the place. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going anywhere until I see our nation in order. I'm not going to focus anywhere. If I leave the country, there is a reason for that. It might be for me to get some more impartation. In other words, I've been giving at a rate of knots all the time. So if I go somewhere, it might be for a conference just to get something. You know, I need some impartation. I need a refreshing so that I can keep going. Or it might be like I'm doing the Israel trips because there is the thing of igniting people to the truth so that they come back more on fire so that they can carry a bigger load. Because that's what I've found. When people go to Israel and they come back, they get such a revelation of the word that they actually carry a lot more weight when they come back. So everything that I'm doing is calculated. And so when we do something, I want you to know that we are doing it, believing that God has called us to do that. And I'm telling you now, every believer must have that same attitude. But my issue today is this. Tonight, as you hear my teaching, I want you to catch this. If you cannot come to the battle and you say, all I can contribute is I'm praying for you guys. I want you to know you are going to receive the same reward that I do. God is not a respecter of persons. In fact, David made it a rule right through Israel, right from that time. Anybody that's connected to the battle had a share. Even the wife staying at home looking after the children. And I want to say this. When we go out and we are busy doing what God has called us to do for our nation. I want to say it's important that we get connected. It's important that we stand up as the body of Christ and say, come, let's sort this thing out. 
Because this is too big for one church or one little organization. If we really want to see the difference in our nation, we're going to have to do this together as the body of Christ. We are going to have to stand solid. We're going to have to stand secure. And we're going to have to do what God has called us to do. And so I want to just tell you this. Find out where you fit in. Ask God to show you. But even if you think it's the smallest, it is the most important for the big picture. The eye is not more important than the hand and the ear than whatever. And Paul makes it very clear. The body of Christ operates on different members, different functions. But every function is needed. When I was in the military, there was a support group that came behind. They came and made sure we had water, made sure that we had food. Let me tell you something. The person you made friends with the first in the army was the chef. You made pals with the chef. So the point is, they were not necessarily on the front line. They were not necessarily getting shot at. But they were important for the whole thing. It's the same in the body of Christ. Every single person is important. Every person has a function. And it says this, God appoints that function as he pleases. So in other words, what I'm doing is not something that I thought was a good idea. In my own natural flesh, I would far rather stay in that time that I had in Kenton to watch the waves come in and go out. I'd far rather sit down and not have that, that pressure of the nation or the responsibility on the nation like I didn't have at that time. Yes, I was going through hell, but there's a big difference between going through hell and me and my family and now having to carry a load in the spirit for our nation. Okay, so I wanted to say in the natural it's always easy to go out and take the easy one. But in the spirit, God has chosen me to do that function for now. I'm not the only one. Please, there's many others. But I'm saying, I'm talking about where I'm at. So, I have had to um, be schooled, be groomed, be equipped, ready to carry this load. You need to understand what God has called you to do. You need to carry your load. You need to do what God called you to do. And this is where we are at. Together we are going to win this battle. But don't ever think and minimize your function in the body of Christ. I want to close with this statement. We are in this together. The rewards are equally split. Make sure you engage somewhere. All right. Am I praying and practicing what we are teaching? Am I interceding? I'm using different functions. Am I a business person who can maybe help, you know, financially to help carry it, push it forward? Whatever it is, you do what God has called you to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's just pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that we will take this burden off us. I come against this demonic thought that one person is more important than another. Lord, I thank you that you place a function as you please on each one of us. Father, I pray that we will be mature and solid and do what you're calling us to do. Lord, that we will obey your word and that, Lord, that we will practice what you've told us to do. And, Lord, that we will take responsibility for our function. And, Lord, that we will know that we are a member of the body of Christ and that we have a role to play in Jesus' mighty name. And, Lord, right now, I thank you. Lord, that I can just pray over the offerings and the giving of Father's heart, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that as anybody who, uh, who is giving today, Father, I pray that we will give in faith. Lord, that we will give according to our faith, believing you, trusting you as our source. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that not only do we give in faith, but God, as we give, we thank you, Lord, that we are part of a vision. Lord, that we are part of a destiny and a purpose in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, I thank you for a supernatural flow of your spirit over each and every person who is giving in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now that you're going to do something supernatural in our finance. Lord, that we will have an abundance for every good work in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, I just want to remind you that if you are giving from outside of South Africa, please go to fathersart.co.za and go to the do donate button. All right, if you 
by now, if you haven't got our banking details, just go to fathersart.co.za. Our banking details are there somewhere. Okay. So I want to bless you. Saints, I want to say this. Father's Art, we have got a mission. We have got a mandate. We've got a job to do in this nation. We have to raise the spiritual standard and create a spiritual umbrella in the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you. Make sure that you are connected. Make sure that you are doing what you meant to do because we have a job to do in this nation. Amen. So I want to say God bless you. And I want to just say it's been an absolute privilege to be part of this inner healing uh, course. Okay. God has really been working on each one of us. And I'll tell you what, I can see a change. And it's been amazing just how this thing has flowed. It is so different to what I expected. All right. It is so different. But I'll tell you what, the fruit is phenomenal. So I want to say, God bless you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being with us. All right. I want to remind you, I'm right back with communion tomorrow morning. Amen. So God bless you. Have an awesome evening. I'll see you soon. And I love you lots. Bye-bye.